Portugal um, has seen, has witnessed a reduction of its com competitiveness uh, in the last 10 years. Uh, we have to um, face up with that sad reality and a country like Portugal is trapped within the European Monetary Union and will not be able to become competitive again within the European uh, Monetary Union. So we have focused too much on momentary, um, the, the momentary obedience to certain formal fiscal criteria <coughs> and we have not sufficiently looked at uh, the enduring fulfillment of comparable competitiveness. The 11 um, founding members of the European Monetary Union were actually and uh, potentially a very heterogeneous club and um, it didn't need much prophecy to foresee that sooner or later if you make one monetary costume for 11 members saying one size must fit all, that would create big problems for those who want to catch up with the competitiveness of other companies. After having um, exposed my uh, differentiated point of view, uh, because I have not been in the past and I will not be in the future uh, a fundamental opponent of European uh, integration, I would like to make it familiar uh, in a perhaps too scholarly way, um, why these breaches of um, the European Treaty uh, have a repercussion on the, the legal appreciation of our Constitutional Court. Well, the, Europe, the German uh, Constitutional <coughs> Court uh, has to judge within the framework of our complaints, um, which represent about 50 complainants. 50 people, 50 people of German civil society, from left to right, from playwrights to the former, uh, to the uh, grandson of the former Chancellor Adler. So all the spectrum, all the spectrum of German civil society. This is not a singular action of myself, it's not a curve complaint. It, I'm only the uh, uh, very visible uh, secretary uh, of a coalition which has never existed before in Germany and which manifests the outcry of German civil society against confiscating in amounts and volumes which we have never thought possible taxpayers' money. So, nevertheless, we have to focus on the legal aspects, the criteria according to which the Constitutional Court has to judge, because these uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, which I have the honor to represent, uh, complain about the violation of their fundamental rights. Let this be remembered. The German constitution is not only one constitution, it's a response to Nazi dictatorship in 1949. We want to make sure that never ever again um, the uh, fundamental core of the rule of law and democracy could be legally abolished. That's why we created the legal framework for allowing citizens of our country to complain to the highest instance, the Constitutional Court, about the violation of fundamental rights by the state itself, because civil liberties are menaced mainly by the state, not by individuals. And then um, the two uh, <coughs> fundamental rights which are in question here are, first of all, um, the fundamental right of property. The fundamental right of property, money property, monetary property, is guaranteed in our constitution always as stable money. Stable money is not something which is um, nominal, but it depends on the monetary and fiscal policy which is conducted by a country. Uh, so if we agreed in the, our constitution to hand over monetary policy to a uh, supranational European instance, the European Central Bank. This, uh, uh, this, this happened with, with, with after great discussion because the people in our country felt and still feel very uneasy about it. But it went hand in hand with um, a guarantee 
that the policy conducted by the European Central Bank and that the rules which should have inspired the European Commission would have been and will be and will always remain the same rules as have been applied to make of the German Deutsche Mark a stable currency in the past. As a matter of fact, we find out today the contrary has happened. Soft law is making its way and um, the Commission and some member states do everything in collusive attempts to bring that system of rules which as a, in itself was well conceived and was at least an institutional guarantee to make the euro a success story uh, under certain political prerequisites uh, to turn the system upside down. So the violation of European law, the central um, rules I've just mentioned before, uh, has a direct repercussion on the property right in our constitution. And we argue that the German holder of euro portfolios is directly affected by the decisions. Although the direct effect, the immediate effect, is not visible. This is the very nature of monetary policy and fiscal policy. It takes uh, from time to time one or two years and from time to time, unfortunately, decades to uh, feel the repercussion. But then it's too late to intervene. Once you feel the pinch of inflation, uh, it's too late to accuse monetary policy of uh, what it has done. So the first fundamental right which has been uh, aggressed by our own government and in a discourse and by a discourse which is the contrary to the discourse of the German government in 1992, really the verbal contrary is the property right. The second one, particularly in the European stabilization mechanism, is the fundamental right of um, democratic participation. The um, Constitutional Court always ruled that democratic participation is a fundamental right and uh, powers should not be transferred in an unlimited way to the European community. And if the competence of the European community is enlarged, this should and must go hand in hand with a massive, conscious vote of the German Parliament as the only constitutional legislator. There should be a qualified constitutional majority for changes of primary law. As a matter of fact, we have here um, a fundamental change of European uh, primary law, of the treaty. Uh, and um, as uh, uh, the European uh, community the European Union, as I should really say, uh, inspired by this initiative by Mr. Frau Merkel, wants to um, revise the treaty and wants to introduce legally these instruments, the Euro Stabilization Mechanism, in integrated into the treaty. This shows the attempt to legalize what was considered as not compatible with European, the European treaty. That is to say, um, a breach of the, of the no bailout clause. As a matter of fact, the German Parliament should have been consulted. The German Parliament had been consulted, but the majority given was a simple majority and not a constitutional majority. That is the, 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 the most outstanding, the most manifest argument, uh, which is um, um, uh, right in the, in the middle of the debate. Let this be remembered, the, the Lisbon Doctrine, uh, uh, the decision of the judgment uh, I got from the, uh, the Constitutional Court quite explicitly rules that there must not be an autonomous process of self-authorization self of the European community through the competence of Article 352, that is to say by complementary uh, competences. And that whenever the European community enlarges competences, there must be a preceding, explicit, constitutional majority in the German Parliament. We find out today that this basic rule, and that this fundamental veto right of the German Parliament has been totally ignored by the German government. And uh, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite confident that uh, the Constitutional Court will find fault with um, uh, that um, um, uh, irrespective um, treatment of the German Parliament because it would abandon 
its own jurisdiction, its own rulings, if uh, they simply um, uh, made a, a, say, a compromising statement today. <clears throat> Let be remembered as well the Maastricht ruling of the Constitutional Court. In essence, the Maastricht ruling in 1993 says, yes, uh, the German Constitution allows and authorizes the partial transfer of um, monetary policy uh, to a European instance. The German government is allowed to uh, initiate and conclude uh, negotiating about the abandoning of the German currency, but only under one condition that 